Good morning, students. On a fresh morning, once again, I welcome all of you to the Gyan Jati online classes. As you know that I am teaching SST and my name is Anil Kumar Swami. Today we will study history. The section one will be history and the name of the chapter students is chapter number five. Stories in ancient books and burial sites. Students, before this, we have already studied chapters like when, where and how, early humans, early farmers, then the first cities. These are the chapters which we have studied before. Then we will study a new chapter today. That is the story in ancient books and burial sites. Students, you know that well, the sources of studying history are many. And among them, two major sources are there. The first one is archaeological and the second one is literary. So among the archaeological sources, there are many <coughs> elements like monuments, inscriptions, <coughs> manuscripts, different types of buildings and etc. etc. So in literary sources we come across ancient books, literatures. So from that sources only we know about our past that what happened in the past what type of books uh, what were the lifestyle uh, people were uh, living what about their um, food habits and etc etc everything all about it so should archaeology also provides us a rich source of information about ancient times should you know that archaeology is a study of the remains of the past and the different objects which we have got from the ground. Students, besides archaeology, there are some sources like the literary texts that were composed in ancient times. Among them, the literary sources, the Vedas are the most important sources. Students, Vedas. Vedas means knowledge. So I am writing here the meaning in bracket knowledge. It means knowledge. Vedas means meaning knowledge. Students, I have written here Vedic literature. So in uh, Vedas, what type of Vedas are there? There are four types of Vedas. The first one is the Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda. Then from this Vedas it provides relatively a comprehensive picture of life in the Vedic period from 1500 BC to 600 BC. From BC to 600 BC. It provides a general information about 1500 BC to 600 BC. Why the Vedas contain hymns? So what does it contain? Does it contain different types of stories? Or anything else? So it contains hymns about the Vedic gods. They also furnish considerable information about the religious practices and other aspects of the life of the people like economy, society, <coughs> sorry, sorry, and polity. The literary texts that were composed in ancient times. Students, hymns means uh, there are some religious songs you can say in small stanzas which is sung in praise of the God that is called the hymns. And the different gods which the early people, early men were praising and especially in Hindu culture they used to sing songs so that was called as hymns. In Hindu you can say bhajan, kirtan. Okay, students. Then the other sources, other uh, types of literary texts. I am writing here Upanishads. There were Upanishads, and then Puranas. There are other examples as Upanishads. Upanishads 
scriptures, then uh, Puranas, then uh, then uh, some religious texts like the Mahabharat, Ramayana, Graphics. Epics like Ramayana and Mahavana. Okay, students. So these are the types of different literary sources. All these literary sources are collectively known as Vedic literature. So it's the heading which I have written here, Vedic literature. So this was the known as Vedic literature. Oh, the literature written in the Vedic period, like this, the epics, the Puranas, the Upanishads. The Vedas, they were known as Vedic literature. So, where, where, the word Veda comes from Vid or Vidya. As I have told you, that Vidya means knowledge. The Rig Veda is the oldest sacred literature in the world. So, there are more than a thousand hymns written in the Vedic literature. These types are composed by mainly the sages, hermits. Students, do you know the meaning of sages and hermits? It means sadhu and something in Hindi. So they have written it over a long period of time. And we are written from, from one generation to the other. And they were compiled, means put together, assembled, compiled and uh, put down to be written in a single book. Okay, students, this was all about the Vedic literature, how it was written and what were the different types. Okay, students. Then now we'll study the what was the language of the Hymns, in which language the Vedas were written. Language of hymns. What was the language of the hymns? Students, you know, nowadays we speak different types of languages. Thousand types of dialects. Dialects, students, you know, dialect means boli. Like I will give you an example of Chhattisgadi. Chhattisgadi is a boli. It can be called as a dialect. They don't have their own script like Odia, like Hindi, like Gujarati, like Telugu. Okay, students. So, the hymns were composed in Vedic. Um, languages. Okay, now so what were that? The hymns were, students, as I told you, were composed in Vedic Sanskrit. Vedic Sanskrit. Students, you know, Sanskrit is one of the oldest languages in the world which is different from the present day Sanskrit. Now, the Sanskrit which you are studying or I am, we are studying, it is totally different from the Vedic Sanskrit. Sanskrit that we read now is taught in schools. Vedic Sanskrit has been found to be quite similar to some ancient European languages. Students, the ancient European languages, so uh, there is a box given in your type of that. Sanskrit belongs to the languages of the same family of uh, languages like English, French, German, Greek, Italian, Spanish, and Persian. Some Indian languages like Hindi, Assamese, Gujarati, and Marathi also belong to the same family. Languages in the southern and eastern parts of the country belong to different families. Yes, students, the southern Indian languages are very difficult, but the languages in the north Indian they are totally different from the southern area. Okay, students. Then, what about the geographical area? What about the geographical area? The geographical area covered by the 
वेदर्स इन वेस्टर्न उत्तर प्रदेश हरियाणा पंजाब पाकिस्तान एंड सदर अफगानिस्तान जोग्राफिकल एरिया सो फ्रॉम इट मीन दैट इन विच एरिया दोज लैंग्वेजेस वेर स्पोकन इन द हाइम्स ऑफ द रिक वेदर ऑल द रिवर्स सचेस द ट्रिब्यूटरीज ऑफ दिंदर्स लाइक द सतलेज बीस रवी एंड चिनाब एंड झेलम द रिवर काबुल इन अफगानिस्तान डाउन टू द गंगा इन दिट है Students will write the names of the areas that Vedas covered. So the Vedas covered the regions like the Western UP, okay, students. Western Uttar Pradesh, then Haryana, Punjab, Pakistan. So these were some of the places where the Vedas were mainly uh, come from. We can say that the areas covered, the people covered where the Vedas was, and the in Rig Veda some of the rivers named. The first of all the Indus River and that tributaries, Indus and in tributaries. Indus and its tributaries. So that's where well mentioned in the Rig Veda. Then what about the next topic? That is the political organization. Means uh, what does the Vedas contain in the political organization? The book we have studied. political organization so what are the political organization let us see that the rig veda mentions assemblies so organization means to a group of people forming a particular body for doing different work so the rig veda mentions assemblies but this probably consisted of some special people particularly warriors so it warrior means it means yuddha it means that the yuddha they used to fight wars and different battles The early Vedic kingdoms probably functioned like republics were a council of elders. You know, the council of elders held power. The people were divided into different tribes called janas. You know, janas mean people. Janas. Then the council elected a chief or head who was called raja. Raja means you know, king. And this tribal republic had a tribal priest called Prohit. You know, Janas means people, Raja means king. People, then priest, Prohit. Then it means Prohit. Then each Jana was come. Composed of multiple villages called Grama. Grama means Grama you know, villages. Now the word we are using still today. Then a Grama, Gramini of the village headman had it. Each village. These were organizations whose every member carried arms and power was shared by all of them. Means they were all responsible for the administration of the villages. The Raja did not have absolute power as he ruled according to the desires of the tribe. His true choice means. The people who were residing in the tribe, they were uh, giving some suggestions, instructions to the king. That is the raja. Two councils called the sabha and samiti controlled the king. The samiti was an assembly where any member of the tribe could come and speak about important matters of the tribe. The sabha was a similar assembly, smaller assembly, sorry, only for the important members of the tribe. Which it was constructed 
for different different uh, different meetings we we were also being had. The guided and advised thing it is important to note that women also participated in the assembly. Nowadays, students most of the children don't give when the, the right to uh, meet, the right to right to meeting, right to vote. They are kind of barred, but it was uh, seen that the women were given a right to sit in the assembly and take different decisions. The Prohib performed religious ceremonies as also advised by the Raja. The commander in chief was also known as the Senani. You know, Sinapati you can say also. So he was the commander in chief who was the leader of the warriors. There are numerous times that refer to the use of chariots with spokes and horses, which gave tremendous advantage to warriors. You know, students, chariots, chariots means it means Raj. Raj. They were used for uh, transportation a uh, war sorry is used for travelling in the time of wars or battles. See the box. So students, there's a box here, there's written a ring with a hind. Thus we can say that this was a culture. A particular organization means it was a culture that uh, used uh, some different weapons also for uh, fighting wars. Students, so then the next topic we will study is about the society. What about the society? This was all about uh, battlefields, political organization, assemblies. Now, the society. Next 
Saxonic economy. So the people who were initially nomadic, but later they settled down. So do you know the meaning of nomad? Nomad means the people who roam from here and there, that don't remain in one place in search of food, in search of um, the elements needed for survival. House also comes in that. So and then we know it from the hives which are connected with the needs of the common people. The dependence of land, fertility, sunshine and water, all important for their agriculture. Therefore, students in the previous chapter we have studied that how the food, how the early man became food producers from food gatherers and they settled in one place. The plow is mentioned in the Rig Veda as well as pointing to the fact that they practiced agriculture and they had the tools for it also. Then students, apart from agriculture, they considered the cow very valuable and so cow as a mark of well students. The most important thing is cow as a mark of wealth. Students, in ancient times it was considered that the person, the family having more cows means they are more richer. Okay students, then apart from agriculture, the Rig Veda also spoke of various artisans and craft people like leather workers, potters and workers. As the society emerged, different types of professions people were doing like uh, the potters were there to make earthen pots, then the uh, leather makers, you can say blacksmith, the cobblers, they were there at time. So doing all their works. Then what about the religion? What about the religion? The Rig Veda has many hymns in praise of the gods. We know it. What about the gods? Who led the people and gave them victories and wealth. During this time, students, they worshipped the forces of nature. What about the forces of nature, students? Godliness was attached to all that. Seen or expressed. The forces of nature, the first one was Agni. The fire god, I can say. And the Vayu, Vayu means air and sun. The sun god were well, the most important early Vedic gods. Indra was believed to be the god of rain and thunder and seems to have been a favorite god. Yes, students, because what was the most important surviving element at that time also? Nowadays, also, water is one of the major elements of the planet earth. It was also believed that Indra could strike down enemies and win riches in war. His wrath was also feared, feared in case of floods or lake of rain. Prithi was the goddess of earth. Prithi means was the goddess of earth. Then Usha, the goddess of Dham, Usha. Usha also one more verses of dawn. Dawn means so we got to work for that. Okay, so we go surprise for this the dawn. And the Soma, the god of plant. Soma. As I have told you, that Soma was, was taken as an alcoholic drink. It was taken from a plant. That name was Soma. There were no temples or idols at this time because after this era, the kings came and they started to make temples for worshipping gods. Instead, ceremonies and sacrifices were performed to please gods. Grains, ghee, and meat were offered to the fire in the ceremonies. Not there were some idols or there were not any places of worship. The priests performed the rituals and requested the gods to listen to the people. The entire family participated in the rituals. Students, this was all about the Vedic period. Now we will study about the megalithic cities. As mentioned briefly in the previous chapter, a megalith. What is megalith? What was the megalith? We have studied in the previous chapter. It is a burial structure that made use of large stones, and that is the name of mega. Mega means 
when large ripping stone, the large stone were there in place of the other burial sites. Students, as the name of the chapter suggests, stories in ancient books and burial sites. We have studied about the books, the Vedas, the Puranas. Now we will study about the burial sites. Okay, students? Students, as we know that we have studied about Bengali. Sorry, students, I have written in city, city, city culture. It was culture. Okay, students. Then, this large stone marked the sites in the burial sites where dead bodies were buried. You know, students, at that time the students, uh, the people were burying the dead bodies inside the earth. Most of the megaliths had rectangular chambers. So, what were the chambers consisting of? The people used slabs to form a box like structure. And this is found to be the most common kind. But some burials have urns with marks that could be possible symbols of particular tribes. Birds. They must be digging, uh, while digging the uh, different types of burials, they must have kept in there some things because they thought that there is life after death. The people who are dying, they may do this type of things. The practice of placing large stones at burial sites is called megalithic culture. During the practice of
स्टूडेंट्स पैस्टो विल बी स्टूडेंट्स इज द वर्ड फॉर पैस्टो विल पैस्टो इट मींस पैस्ट्रो इट मींस पैस्ट्रो रिलीज पैस्टर स्टूडेंट्स यू नो मींस प्रेशर मींस मिल एंड वेयर द different animals graze like the cattle especially the cattle the domestic animals there is evidence of trade to since some of the sites are important trade centers students at that time also they were doing uh, trade for the living and then only the standard of living was also increased at a sort of time the discovery of daggers and swords indicate they were engaged in warfare also yes so by discovering all these things they knew about our so we we knew sorry so we knew about their lifestyle what were they doing the pottery found is usually black and red ware black and red ware means the color of the pottery they are large in size and made on wheels and black in clay clay will show it pretty you can see in wheels you have seen a potter have you ever gone to a potter shop you can see in a wheel he makes some pottery the polish on some pots still retains in luster till now After this, arms have been also found, friends, with skeletons in them and the sides. Some arms were broken and were filled with earth. Oh yes, it may be between thousands of years. The archaeologists have discovered from the earth. These arms also had some empty miniature vessels, rice paddy and husk. The vessels were bowls, small pots, and Vessels which had lids, lids you know, students have done. Now we will study about the mineralogy practices in the some areas of the our country. Mineralogy practices. Now. Then, 
majority of the monoliths present here were built in memory of some special people. In the Khasi Hills, there are a number of ancient monoliths and table stones. The largest cluster of monoliths is the Nartian village. So, Jaintia Hills and also is situated in Jaintia Hills. The student, the site is called a park of monoliths. The cluster of monoliths was erected to mark the Reigns of the erstwhile Jaintia kings. Students, especially uh, you know that the kings for their uh, spread of power, uh, for the to show their power, they usually construct different types of palaces and uh, temples were also being made. So, like Jaintia kings holding a significant event in the history of Bihar, as they made these type of parks and different types of uh, monuments also. The monoliths are in symbol of memorial, these were raised over the ashes of the dead. The ashes are deposited in caves and cenotopes. The monoliths were also erected to commemorate memorable events. In the last section of this chapter, we will study about the, there are two types of to a monolith. The upright part represents male. Friends, there are two types of monolith. So what are the two types? The upright part represents Thank you very much.